in this awesome episode of The Mind Pump. For the first 39 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. This is where we talk about current events, studies, science, and fun stuff. Fun stuff. After that 39-minute intro, we get into the fitness portion. We talk about fat loss, muscle building, and all things fitness, health, and wellness. Here's what we talked about in the first 39 minutes of this episode. Adam talked about how he's getting a brand new, uh, what is it called for your for your cup there? The can chiller. Can the, chiller yeah. from mm. Mir. Now, this is a really cool can chiller. You put your can in there. Shit's it's got in a the top. koozie. It <laughs> keeps things cold. It keeps them cold for a very, very long time. Now, Mir, M-I-I-R, is one of our sponsors. They make amazing products, including thermoses and water bottles and things like the can chiller. We also have a discount for you. If you go to mirror.com, that's M-I-I-R.com, and use the code MINDPUMP, I, I, I. you'll get 25% off your order. Then I talked about how I got a smoothie at Whole Foods with plant protein, and guess what? It tasted like dirt and bugs. Ew. Disgusting. Reminded me why so right. we work with Organifi. Now, they make all natural, organic, vegan products, and their protein is plant-based, but it doesn't taste like dirt and bugs. It actually tastes like chocolate or vanilla. It tastes really, really good. Organifi is one of our sponsors. They have lots of other products you can look through. Again, organic, vegan-based, health, fitness, muscle-building, fat-burning type products. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and use the code Mind Pump, you'll get a massive 20% off. Then we talked about Netflix docu-series, the mystery murder ones. Adam crapped everyone out with this terrifying <laughs> tale yeah. of the last one he just watched. Now, why'd you have to bring that up? Uh, I talked about how my daughter is doing robotics, which is kind of cool. And then I talked about my boy in high school. He's uh, in high school now, new challenges. It's kind of cool. And we talked about lifting weights uh, with my son. That was cool, too. Then we talked about how Instagram uh, is now changing how people are going to be advertised to. Apparently, if you're under 18 years old, you will not get advertisements for weight loss uh, products or feet, fit tees or any other bullshit product that does no nothing, more screams. nothing for you at all. Step one, maybe step two is they'll ban it for everybody. Justin talked about his awesome find. He's not a big bragger, uh, but apparently... He's in the American Hall of Fame or whatever yeah. that book is right there. It's in <laughs> it, writing. It's a real thing, Sal. He broke records. Oh, man. And then I talked about how there's a new smart artificial hand. And Justin talks about how he would use that smart artificial hand. Oh, you know. Then we get into the fitness portion of this know. episode. This person's saying that, you know, some people claim that training a body part every single day, like your arms every day, will force them to grow. What is the our opinion on that? Or is that true or is that false? Or can you do that in a way that'll make it work? Next question. This person wants to know what single exercise each of us would pick that we think would have the biggest corrective benefit for the general pop population. So corrective benefit meaning correcting some form of poor posture or pain or something that we see that's common uh, all around us. The next question, this person wants to know how you overcome the mentality of, I'll just start tomorrow. You know, that unmotivated mentality like, yeah, I think tomorrow's a good day. Everybody wants to do something tomorrow, but never today. We talk about our successful strategies. And finally, we talk all about what goes on behind the scenes. So you listen to the podcast. You can hear how awesome we are. Uh, but how does that all happen? Who's uh, behind Who's the scenes? Who's the real wizard? Who's recording the video right now as I'm talking? We talk about all that and more. Uh, also, this month, MAPS Starter is 50% off. Now, remember, MAPS Starter is the workout program specifically designed for people who want to start with resistance training. So if you're a beginner and you want to reap all the benefits of resistance training, you want to get, you want to build muscle, sculpt your body, speed up your metabolism, but you really haven't done it before and you're a bit intimidated or confused, MAP Starter is a perfect program for you. It's all laid out, broken down for you. Data. We have uh, workout videos in there so you can see the exercise form and technique, blueprints that tell you what to do. Uh, it's broken down into phases. It'll take you step by step through the beginning journeys of resistance training. Here's the best part. All you need are dumbbells and a physio ball. You don't even need a gym to do this. You could do this at home. In the right attitude, Sal. Now, if you're super advanced and you're like, I don't need that program because I've been working out for a while, get it for one of your friends or family members. You know somebody who could benefit from starting out with resistance training. You know how intimidating it could be for them or how confusing it could be. Map Starter is a wonderful gift for people who want to get started with resistance training. And now's the time to get it. It's 50% off. Here's what you do. Go to mapsstarter.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com. 
and use the code STARTER50, S-T-A-R-T-E-R-5-0, no space, for the discount. Remember when we had that big old argument over headphones? Back in the day, uh, I don't know you guys are big. spending millions of dollars on headphones. Yeah, because we like care about being cool <laughs> and like not being lame. Your headphones match your fucking shoes. Yeah, yeah they dude. work. Yeah, you're right. You're exactly. They work. Full Actually, these are the new yeah. ones, dude. Look at that. Those are classy, bro. Let me tell you something. They are. It's like I'm walking on. Yeah, I bet you run like a gazelle. I'm wa- no. Yeah, I want to not it. get carried away. Yeah. Yeah, definitely that's what don't. they're made for. I, I run like a gazelle that's been injured. <laughs> the wounded gazelle. Yeah, no, this is like it's like walking on uh, pillows. I, um, is that good? I can't. When I see those shoes, I can't help but envision like a, a tennis balls on the bottom of a walker. That's what just. Oh, that's yeah, what yeah, I yeah. see. I see a walker mm. with tennis balls. That's yeah, what I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see yeah, that, Justin? Totally. No. I mean, yeah. how high do those black socks go? That's huh? my question. All the way. I <laughs> see. Knee high. Yeah, you, you, you have those 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 straps that keep them up. You know, that's the next move. For <laughs> what you. was that all about? Was that because I socks? Don't know. They didn't have socks that were tight back in the day. Yeah, I think it's like pre, being professional. You no didn't elastic. want it to sag down. There was no elastic. No then? elastic in socks, so you had to hold them up somehow. God, you know what's oh. crazy? Is that true? We got the historian here. Yeah, back in my day. Is that true? True, Doug? No, that's true, I believe. Yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy? What did, what did Think elastic- about the brilliant motherfucker that came up with putting an elastic inside the sock. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, Change the game. Can you Google that guy, Doug? Dude, that and, and the I'm, shoelace I am, plastic cap. I am always fascinated with the guy or girl who does this, right? Like, I've, this is who I've always wanted. I've always wanted to be somebody who nobody knew who you were, but you did something that, like, forever gets used or for you're forever known for. Changes that. the game. Yeah. Right. Like the, the paper clip. Nobody ever talks about that guy. No. The guy invented a paper clip. How about sliced bread? I know we always say greatest things to slice bread, but right. remember the first person to sell sliced bread? <laughs> they must have made fun of him. Yeah. They must have been like, oh, you're an idiot. Oh, slice People bread, slice huh? their own bread. How yeah. about the dude who, uh-uh. who invented the umbrella that goes in the margaritas? Mm. Mm. Yep, because your drink needs shade Yeah, <laughs> to prevent itself from... Yeah. That one's yeah. not so obvious to me, <laughs> but he did make a lot of money on it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, he did make a lot of money. Or the person that did the, the easy egg the, cooker, the, the first, work. the first uh, non-spill cup lid thing. You know, like McDonald's has all the, cup. Yeah, mm. who did that? You first? mean the, the the thing that goes on top? Yeah, yeah. Just like the, little, little you know, lid with the plastic with a little hole in it. Those yeah. are like that's yeah. universal. Yeah, sippy cup. Yeah, Seven yeah. Eleven, McDonald's. They all use the same, pretty much the same one. Yeah, who who yeah. invented that first? I don't know, but I f- these are like game changing yeah. inventions that then are, the the inventors well, are forgotten. It reminds me, there's actually a show on Netflix about this origins. I believe is what it's called. But I was watching that and- orgies. Origins, yeah. Origins. Origins. Not I that do one. watch or yeah, that's different. That's late hour. Uh <laughs> but yeah, that uh I was watching that and they were going through like uh the origin of um arrows into like the different weaponry, how we got to like guns and how we got to like the nuclear bomb. And I was actually wrong with what I thought was originally gunpowder. So like gunpowder for some reason I thought it was where they would they took like some some pig shit and like dried it out and then used what yeah like that I remember like somebody talking about that like it was part of the ingredients to make a uh, um, gunpowder like it was accidental yeah it was like accidental but yeah. it was actually like this. the monks Chinese uh, monks right Chinese monks yeah, yeah were the ones responsible for coming up with this when they were putting like these formulations together with salt and uh what was it salt i forget the other two ingredients but uh yeah it was it was ac- totally accidental you remember the most like benign ingredient yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 i know you got to put some salt in there <laughs> oh sulfur was the other one sulfur and then the, there's a one more there was a third one speaking pinch of, of pinch of salt yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. whoa i was eating this and then that happened oh shit <laughs> that's, yeah. that's that's not why you have explosive farts <laughs> just a, it's not cuz of the salt uh, speaking of first farts. Speaking of shit, what? Do you, so I don't know if this is true. So maybe someone can correct me. But this is like a, it, maybe it's a myth. It's probably not true. But it's widely believed that the word shit is an acronym. Did you guys know that? That the origin, the origin of the word shit, comes from when ships used to transport uh, fertilizer and manure way oh, back in the day. I've actually heard of this. And what they would write on the barrels. These are this is way 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 back. <laughs> What they would write on the barrels was ship high in transport because if you put them too low on the bottom underneath on the bottom decks or whatever, the gases and methane or whatever would build up from the poop. And then if there was a spark, yeah, you would have a explosive. fire or explosive or explosion. So they'd write on these ship high in transport, and then that became an acronym, shit. 
Hmm. So I don't know if that's true, but sounds good, right? No, I've actually heard that. that. Sounds like Probably for me. Maybe. We would have been high oh, with the we're origin about of this. shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway. Wait, and then the origin of crap. You guys know where that comes from? No. The guy who invented the toilet. His last name was Crapper. Nice. You liar. Look it up, Doug. Crapper. <laughs> Is it? Look it up. Guy who oh. invented the toilet. His la- James <laughs> Crapper, I think his name was. Well, Doug still hasn't found my paperclip guy. Paperclip. Yeah. The no. guy who invented the paper. Yeah, what? but you didn't know the name. You just want to know his name was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was curious. No idea. And but, how rich he is. And the umbrella guy. Like the, I don't think they patented it. I think they did. Really? Yeah, yeah. So every paperclip pa- made? Yeah, no, I think he, <laughs> he gets a royalty. No, yeah. See, the, see who what invented it. if you it? bend it a little different? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's ways around it. That's, it sounds like a, he's, oh, no, he's yeah, super he's protected. I yeah, breakable. I think so. Let's let's see what the... No, I could I be wrong, so. but I think so. So, Thomas so, Crapper. So, I was wrong. Was Thomas Crapper. Crapper. Thomas myth, Crapper. Myth, jo- myth and why Crapper Lou Toilet is is not a John. What? Wait. Wait. While Sir John Harrington is credited with the invention, it was Alexander Cummings that received the first patent of a flushing water closet. Wow. So, nobody named Crapper invented the toilet. So that was wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody named Cummings. Come. Inv- <laughs> I mean, there's, that would have been worse, right? Thanks, yeah. Justin. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. alluding to that. Thanks for spelling yeah, it out. The, the cum guy, he came up with toilets. <laughs> yes, yeah, <there> <laughs> I mean, you got to put it somewhere. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Uh, Adam, what, what are you... Somebody had to say it. I got to change subjects. <laughs> Adam, what's in your story? What are you buying? Oh, the can chiller. A can what? A can chiller. It's like a. It's like a. Like a. a it's mirrors. Oh, new- like a like an ice chest. Like a koozie. Oh, like a koozie. Oh, uh, but, but wait, wait, hold on. This is mirror. Yes. So what is it exactly? So it's like it's like a koozie, but it's like made out of the same thing that our our you know the the flasks are made of the, the thermos or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So they keep it super cold or super hot for all day long. So it's made to put a can inside. Yeah. Oh. Like one can at a time. One can at a time. Oh. Yeah, it's like it a, sounds. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, it's like a it's like a better version of a koozie. Yeah, because a koozie does that yeah. too, but because thermoses have that space of air between the two walls. Yeah, they do a. Well, you guys know with our new, mm. you know our our new ones that we have from Mirror, we've I could put I could put cold water from my house in there this morning. Yes, and it'll be cold tonight all day. Isn't that weird? And it could be it could be hot in my car, and I'll still be it'll still be cool. Yeah, That's- so my my daughter loves it for that okay. exact reason. So I could see it for I mean, you're at the beach and you get that sand like in your drink. And I, like all bro, that kind I ordered, of stuff, it I ordered, covers it up. I ordered it because I can use. I already see multiple reasons I'd use. It. One, what? I'd use it like you just said, the beach, like that. I would use it on the boat when we're out on the boat all the time. I'd use it on a hike. Imagine if you went for a hike and you wanted a cool, a cool can drink. Right. You don't want to. You're not going to carry a fucking cooler with you, or you don't want to carry a cooler. Mm-hmm. But Jeez. you have this. You keep your drink in there. Is like, that a lid? Does it have a lid? What yes. Is that? Yeah, it seals it. So what you would do is you think of it right now. I have like hmm. my my Hanson drinks that I, I told you guys I like. You slide that in there right now. It's cold from the refrigerator. Seal that up. I could keep it in my car. I could keep it in here. And then when I open it up at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's still cold. Oh, there you go. Right. So this there is more like, like carbonated beverages, I would think. You know, Otherwise, you would use the, the water bottle. Yeah. Oh, oh, to pour. Yeah, yeah. No, you wouldn't use... Yeah, you wouldn't I, want to open your beer and pour it in there and then no. close it and leave it all day. No, no, that no, is, that's not. That's no, you see how the idea. can the can kind of sticks out. And they have a. I got the regular like twelve ounce because I see myself using the twelve ounce more. But they have it for the the taller taller. How sp- much are they? Oh, it's not that much. What does that all. say? Doug? This is one of those products I didn't even know I needed. This nineteen ninety five. Yeah, but they have people mind pump listeners get twenty five percent off too. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, a no. that's a great deal. Yeah, no, it's a no brainer. I got a couple of them because uh, I I will I'll use them for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, speaking of of our sponsors, so yesterday I did a great workout, um, and I was deadlifting yesterday. I wasn't planning on going heavy. I haven't gone heavy on purpose for a long time, so I haven't gone over. 400 pounds for long. In fact, last week uh, I stuck to 315 and p- pulled that for 15 reps, um, which was which was pretty good. But I'm not going heavy. I haven't gone heavy for a while. I've been trying to work on form. But then I start working out and Danny's in the gym. Oh. You know what I mean? He's, <laughs> he's on his computer, uh, but I know he's watching. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, I know he's peeking over to see like, what the old, old man Sal can do. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So I said, all right, let's see what happens. Let's throw five wheels on here. I haven't done that for a long time. Felt great. Yeah, it felt really strong. Came up real smooth. Did you ask him to come over and pick it up? Nah, I d- no, <laughs> no. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want the poor kid to hurt so, himself yeah. trying to lift one side. Here, of it, do some know? bent over rows. They're superior, dude. <laughs> Try right. it. Yeah, I don't want him to injure himself. He's just a you know, he's a young kid. You know, right. early muscle development. Poor not, dude. Early not fully. Muscle development. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Poor guy was standing. It's like brand new. Everything's so nice and shiny. Well, hold on. So I did that workout, yeah. trained hella hard, and I was just in time. I had to pick up my boy from school, got my boy, and I'm like, F- I want to. I, I didn't have a chance to eat anything. I didn't have any food beforehand. So I'm like, I feel like having a, a shake or something, but I'd already left, yeah. left the studio because normally what I would do is I would just have the Organifi protein shake. So I went to Whole Foods. And I bought us smoothies. And then, of course, I got him whey protein because my son can have dairy. I can't have dairy. So I'm like, let me have the plant protein. So two things. First off, they put it in a cup, paper straw. Fucking hate paper straws. You guys are idiots who push that. Damn (laughs) straws suck. The worst. Oh, they're terrible. Anyway, in a big-ass plastic cup with a new plastic lid that's way more plastic. Especially with... Like drinks like a that. A smoothie? Yeah. Through a paper uh, straw? Uh. It's going to disintegrate before even a quarter of the way down. I'm sure we're going to find some studies going to show that I now have liver cancer because all the paper <laughs> that I <laughs> swallowed from the paper. Yeah, anyway. I'm supposed to eat trees. So anyway, I'm drinking, the, I'm, I'm sipping on this, this drink and I'm like, oh, I forgot how shitty plant protein powders yeah, taste. Yeah, no. They're, they're fucking they're terrible. They're the That's worst. where Organifi hit a home run. Dude. Kills it. Yeah, no, yeah. they did. Kills it. Because plant, here's, let's be honest, okay? No plant protein tastes as good as whey. Nope. Whey is just way better tasting, which is why I think it's more. That's where they get the word whey. Yeah, way. it's way better. Tasting. <laughs> it's way better tasting. <laughs> but uh, Organifi, in my opinion, is the only plant. Protein. It rivals. <clears throat> it's close. Yeah, it, it's way better than any other uh, plant protein because I had the one that they had, gave me at Whole Foods, and you can taste it. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm like it was like no dried way. like. Dirt. Yeah, it was like, it was like peas like and dirt. rice. Yeah, it tastes uh-huh. like dirt to me. Yeah. This doesn't taste good. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Organifi, good job. Yeah. You did a very, very good job. So Danny last night uh, stayed at my place. And he, so he comes down every Thursday, right? So he comes down and he shoots content every Thursday here. And lately he's been staying over at uh, Rachel and Taylor's and Eli's at the, the Hustle House, right? And so that's where he's been staying. Oh, that's what it's called? The Hustle House? Yeah, you didn't right, know that? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't know that? Cool. Yeah, you're not a hustler. They don't let you there. Oh, man. I thought it was the Pump Palace. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> no, that's, oh, my God. that's the other place. Wow, that sounds worse. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. So he he uh, stays at my place last night. Well, I knew that he'd been sleeping on the couch over at their place. And I have a, I have a spare room. But I kind of been telling him, I said, you know, my place isn't the, the best to stay at right now, man. I said, I got a, I got a newborn. My AC broke. Are you sure you want to come over? And he's like, yeah, no, I'll be, I'll be fine. So last night he stayed at my house, and then this morning I see him because they were shooting content early this morning here, and I walked in and said, hey man, how'd you sleep? Ugh. Oh, exactly. <laughs> 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 and it's funny because last night, I mean, I'm all the way in the bottom floor, right? So he's upstairs in the one of the spare. The, our our bed, our three bedrooms are on the very top floor, and uh, you know the master bedroom's down the hall from his room, but it's still close enough that. Uh, a screaming baby, you can definitely hear. And I could hear, <sighs> last night I could hear Max uh, all the way down on the bottom floor. So I imagine in the spare room he heard him just fine last oh, night. It's great birth control. Yeah, and then on top of that, it was warm in my house because I don't have my AC going. It was a cooler night, so it, was, it wasn't miserable, but uh, I'm sure it wasn't great. So I saw. I saw. I'm curious. Like next, so next week when he comes, we'll see if he even asked this. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he's been like, it's like, dude, I got a hotel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Can yeah. I sleep at the studio? No, it's not yeah. a big deal. Yeah. I don't want to inconvenience you guys. Yeah. Well, he's young, man. You remember when you were young? How you could just not sleep? Yeah. yeah you just and, roll on somebody's couch. Yeah. And just get up. And you're like, cool. Yeah. 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 Now I'm like, you know what I mean? Now I get up to go pee one time in the middle of the night, yeah. and I got a backache. Or something weird like that. <laughs> yeah. It's the last knees we'll, we'll, and a rib comes out. Yeah. Last night, uh, I'm watching, um, hey, Netflix. So we know that Netflix spent a uh, bajillion dollars on- There's uh, that number again. I know. It's such a good number. Don't you think? Yeah. I yeah. feel like it, people get what I we mean. You get like right? quadzillion. We need yeah. some new terms. No, 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 no. Bajillion. All right. You get Bajil- All right. a lot of fucking money, right? Mm-hmm. That, that they spent the last year on uh, all their all their original content. And it's kind of cool because we've we've talked about it on the show, we've seen it, and I'm starting to see a lot of it really start to drip out now. And they did a really good job on a lot of these. And I, I the reason why I'm sharing this because I've been the one to kind of talk shit about Netflix a little bit that I think that you know Apple or somebody else is going to come over and thump them. But I I'm impressed with, and it's so smart what they've done. They're they're recreating a ton of these like murder mysteries, rape cases, like true stories with real actors. And so that's what makes it. So it's like a drama based on a true story. Yes. And Mm. it's a docu-series. So they're typically like anywhere from four to eight episodes that are like an hour long. Uh, But they because they have real actors doing it and they're stories that are compelling. And they totally, of course, 
tapped into what we already know. You guys know that the most popular podcasts are what? Oh, murder, oh, mystery. murder mysteries, yeah. right? Right, mm-hmm. murder mysteries, and the, all those type of you know podcasts. So they, they they just have the the binge quality. I don't know what it, and I don't even know what it is with me. Like I'm watching this, and I'm watching it, and, I, and it is kind of slow. Probably because you want to figure out what happened. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. totally what keeps you like watching the next one, the next one, the next one. I mean, yep. it, I knocked it out, and I watched this one called um, Unbelievable, and it was. Did you believe it? I didn't. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Didn't so believe it. Held up the name. No, I believed it. I believe that there's fucking crazy people like this. Cool. It's it was on this it was this rape case that was in the early two thousands and uh it was an ex military guy who was um knew how to avoid like getting caught. And so he and, and you know, they don't actually release the end how many total people he he got. You know for sure he he got in the twenties. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. It, he was so smart the way he went around from city to city mm. and he's a fucking predator. Yeah. Like a legit Wait, yeah, I saw a little bit something uh, about this in terms of they didn't share information like in different like police departments for a while. Because he what he did is he knew he knew how the system worked and he knew like how how they gather gather information, how they would share with other other police stations, and he was so smart the way he did it that it took a, I think it took over a year before they started to connect like all these unsolved rape cases in these cities mm-hmm. were the same person that was going Disgusting. all over the place. Yeah, and he was and he in the in the the series talks about that he has he had no intentions of slowing up. In fact, it was something that he planned to do forever until he got caught. Yeah, I just remember lots of cases like that that they could have solved. But it was like back then, it was like an ego thing of like, we're going to solve this in our county and we're going to figure this out. And they wouldn't like, uh, you know, connect with these other counties to to really collectively share data. That's dumb. Yeah, really dumb. That's well, so it's, dumb. it's also, I mean, and they, they get into it a little bit. There's this, so it's a combination of that, but it, I think it's more so... It's hard. To, there's so many cases that are happening uh, all the time that there has to be like very obvious things that connect like patterns. Right? Yeah, that, that you're can seeing, connect yeah. them. And uh-huh. and and I guess when, it's true because you think of like okay, there's a rape in this town. Uh, you know, those types of crimes happen quite a bit in other towns. How would you even know to share? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That they're yeah. connected. And they have a database. Unless but it if, was really weird. Or but something. if you exactly. But if you have a guy who I'm not is give an example. Don't worry. <laughs> If you have a guy who is covering all his tracks, like he was gloves, uh, there was so there was no forced entry. There was he took all the sheets. He took he wore a condom. He made the he made his victims shower afterwards. So no DNA samples. Like mm. he like. Oh the, my god! Wow. What a terrifying. Not only did he rape you, but then he makes you take a shower afterwards. Dude, eight, four to six hours he would he would rape them for. Oh, oh my god! Disgusting. And, and then have them share Shit. shower afterwards. He'd take photos of them. All this it was crazy. And then they find I find out in this that, that this this book exists that's called Rape for Forensics, and it was a bunch of police officers that made a book on the forensic how they how they capture. So a, he knew how to avoid totally. Oh, that's wow. terrible! And thousands of those copies have been sold, and people have bought. So then you could. So at the I, end, they did catch them. Obviously, yeah, they did. Oh, catch them. Fuck. How fucked up would it be to make a docu series like that? That's so compelling, and then leave it, and they never like, figured out he's still out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Last episode, you know, like we're gonna catch him. Oh. We never caught him. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> oh, it's terrifying. Oh god damn it, dude! Why'd you crap me? I know, that? right? No. Yeah. That's a terrible. Yeah, no. The point of me Anyways. telling that is that Netflix is killing it on some of these, uh, some of this original content. I mean, it, it sucked me in. I mean, I knocked that series. Out, I think yeah. two days. I'm still loving that mind explained. Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, series. All right, have you seen it yet? Only two episodes. Just the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it, man. It's so well made, uh, smart, very, very. Smart. I love that one. And there's this. It's like a. I don't know. It's a design, home design uh, show, uh, modern designs or whatever, where they take like these really interesting buildings and then they make something out of it like it's like an old castle that's just been you know like this historic landmark but somebody wants to make it into like a legit functioning house and like what they have to do to draw it up and get really creative with the space just to make it work and they do that to all these different like like really 
cool buildings like in England. I've seen shows like this, but here's the th- on on Netflix. But are they all based out of England or Australia? Yeah, or they're taking tripping? a lot of. Yeah, they're buying all the uh, the content. Is that what there. it is? Uh-huh. Because every time I watch one of those shows, yeah, Jessica loves them. It's an English show. Yeah. yeah, I'm always like, why are there no American home improvement shows on Netflix? Because <laughs> yeah, I guess we're not doing creative shit like that. I, I guess we're just buying. <laughs> yeah, them out we're or whatever. just buying. I want to track home and brr, yeah, you know, like lame. Interesting. Yeah, they're doing cool stuff. Uh, well, yesterday, uh, so my daughter signed up for robotics she's in fourth grade which is exciting because oh she's doing it too huh? yeah dude and that's I think interesting she's following in her brother's you know i think i think she's doing it because her brother uh you know does it and now does it for so long now what you've told me so far i mean hmm. they, they seem like they have total different personalities she's more in the limelight you know funny yeah like doesn't mind getting up in front of her, her peers like that's a do you think that right now she's doing it because her brother is and she looks up to her brother? I think, and you she, think she. I think a little bit of that because her. Um, I asked her, I said, What do you like about it? What do you like about robotics? And she's like, Oh, I get to. We get to build something, which was cool that she said that. And she's like, But I get to you know, be with my friends. And I think she has a really. Has, she has fond memories of the tournaments because when the tournaments are all day, right? When you go to, to these, these Lego robotics tournaments. You get there like 8 a.m. and you're not gone till like 7 p.m. Mm. And they're not competing the whole time. They'll do a competition and then it's like another two hours until their next competition. So the kids are just doing whatever they want. They're out playing with their friends. And I think she just has good like good memories of that. So I think that's part of it. Her friend signed up for this class, uh, which is cool. Two of her friends. So there's three girls in the class. And usually it's mostly mostly boys, but it's cool that there's three girls that they and that they want to do it. Mm-hmm. And I had that conversation with her. I said, do you like... The programming part. She's like, yeah, we're learning how to program. We're building it. She's like, I'm going to make mine look like a unicorn, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> and I told her, I'm like, that is a very valuable skill. I told her, this is an extremely valuable skill. And I'm, it's, I can tell that you're enjoying this. I'm not trying to push her in any direction, but it's kind of cool to, you know, to see. But boy, does it get to a whole nother level. When you go into high school uh, and above, yeah, you're tell me a little bit about your your son. How is how is school going for your boy right now? If, if you have a high schooler now, yeah, bro. it's going good. Is he, that weird for you yet? Um, a little bit. It is a little weird, but uh, because I got to think you you were probably. Uh, I mean, I I know Justin was. I think I was the same way. Like this is the these next coming years is where you really start to form into being a man and you're an right, adult. You're starting to, to figure it out. Yeah, and your yeah. person... I mean, what it was 15's the age when you think you know everything. Totally. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, totally. I definitely thought I knew more than my parents by 15, oh, for yeah. sure. No, no. I mean, he's a really good kid. Um, uh, the, the thing that's been interesting is the challenge that it's, that it's, uh, it's presented because he went to a, a difficult high school, and then on top of that, he's taking uh, advanced classes. And, you know, the, 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 the issue I had with my son was I was always worried that he was going to hit, be hit with a challenge and not ho- know how to deal with it because academically things tend to come easy to him. So I was like, okay, I, I want to see what happens when he really encounters his first like really difficult class or whatever. Like yeah, I've, First bad grade. Like I've literally never had to help him with homework, ever. <clears throat> he's never come up to me and said, hey, can you – he just does it. That's crazy. Yeah, so he's had a couple tests and quiz quizzes – that are difficult. So we've had these discussions and I told him, you know, on, on our drives, I get to pick him up from school and drop him off every day. And I said, you know, I said, I'm glad you're, you're, you're finding these challenges that this is good because it's going to teach you how to handle these challenges. I said, right. you need to learn how to study. And he goes, what do you mean? I study. I said, no, no, no. You need to learn how to better behaviors on how to study because what you've been doing before isn't going to work anymore. You can't rely on your talent like you used to. Now you're in a much more competitive environment. And then as far as robotics is concerned, these kids are, you know, it's it's three or four hours every day. I know you said wow, that. Like massive 30, 30 hours a week. Yeah. Three or four hours every single day. There, it's just robotics. So aside from all his other classes and courses, and he has at least a couple hours of homework every day. On top of that, the robotic classes are. That is. And they're so highly, was he hesitant at first, like knowing that it was like, oh, I don't know about. Yeah. This. So so that was a. I was actually really really proud. Is that he he went to the first kind of meeting. And he came out and I picked him up and I'm like, so what do you think? He goes, he goes, it's a, he goes, I don't know if I want to do it, which was kind of shocking because he'd been doing it for so long. I said, well, how come? And he goes, the commitment is crazy. He's like, it's three, four hours almost every single day. And I thought like, okay, well, okay, how do I approach this? So I said, listen, I said, I, the last thing you want to do is not do something because you're afraid. Mm-hmm. So if it's because you're afraid, because it's a challenge, it's a different, now you're the bottom rung because now you're in, in, a, in a, you're taking a class and you're, Working with people who have who are way more advanced than you because there's 
sophomores, juniors, and seniors that are doing it. I said, you're the bottom guy. I said, if you're doing it because you're a little intimidated, that's not a good reason to not do it. If you just don't like it, like I get that. And then we talked about the value and all that. And then I left it and I said, look, whatever you decide to do, uh, I'll support because I, I don't want him to feel like he had to do it so he didn't let me down because I don't want him to resent me. That's a bad thing too. If he does it and then resents me afterwards, no value, right? right. Yeah. He waited till the very last day till signups and then he did it. He signed up. So I was really, really proud of him. Now, nice. is it, has it started? Is he actually doing it? They're now? doing it. They're doing the stuff. He could still drop out if he wants to, but the fact that he's actually in there and doing it mm -hmm. uh, and that he chose to, to try it out made me feel you know now, really happy. Now, the three hours a day, do they, is that like, during or at, right after school, or right after. So they stay. He stays on campus. He stays on campus till six or seven o'clock at night. Holy wow. shit! Yep. Yeah, that's, yep. Wow. Now, now that's better than the alter. The, they, there were two robotics classes that they had. The other one goes at. So there's two. There's two of them. Uh, but one of them, it's a huge team that makes a huge robot. This other one that he does, there's smaller teams that make smaller robots, but they're all considered robotics. He wants to work with the smaller teams. Mm. The big robot one. Those guys will meet up at like, I don't remember what time. It was something like 4, and they're there till like 9 p.m. every day or something like that. It's insane. It's insane what they do. So what? freshmen are even in that program as yes. well? Yes. And, and you ask, you know, you're right. You think, why? Bro, This these teams compete on a world level, world right. stage. And major corporations are, I'm sure, paying attention. These are high schools, and they compete nationally and globally. Well, isn't his isn't his high school known for that, right? It's one of the top ones for for specifically. For, so it's like you're not fucking around. Yeah, and you're doing shit from scratch. That's the crazy thing. It's like you got to build a robot that is this, and they have a few parameters. Like you can't do this, you can't do that. But other than that, it's like they're in there working with tools and building machines. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, obviously, the applications of that for the modern economy. Or, oh or, yeah, for future. Yeah, there's there's lots of benefits to that's having that knowledge. So interesting to me because I, I envision myself, or I think back to when I was in high school and like what my school day looked like, and I couldn't imagine if it was if the after school was consumed by three to five hours. Of, well, we did that in sports. Yeah. yeah. How long was practice? Well, that's, typically? that's what I mean. Well, not no three to five hours. I don't know. Yeah, we did. We, we, we Hell did week. Weight, tr weight training, and then you did like extra like hours. We would throw. Well, in. when I did that, it was I was allowed to take an elective for my last class, or yeah, you'd wrap it into school if you or, could. Yeah, or PE yeah. was I as an athlete, you could take PE as yeah. Your, I took weight training as an elective. Yeah, so did I. So that yeah. still was in the the school hours. So, True. You know, that was like, I got to take a, a two o'clock gym class, which just meant we got to go well, to basketball. I was a TA as well for one of my English teachers who was the football coach. So we would just break down film the entire hour, you know? So yeah, there was ways around it, but yeah, that was the commitment level. It's like, you know, you get those extracurricular like interests, like, and that's definitely something that I think it makes it the big difference is if, if you enjoy it and you're, and you, you, you you're enjoy the time it. or you don't, yeah. that's what makes the big difference. Cause totally. after, I fuck after, after school, I was like done with school. Like, you know, Me bell too. rang, yeah. fucking out of here. But I would go in my backyard and lift weights for two and a half hours, three hours, because I loved it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if he loves it, I'm okay with it. But if I start to notice that he's not fucking, like, it's it's not good, it's not helping well, him, yeah. then I'll have that conversation and tell him, like, look, man. And he has a like social it. outlet built in with everybody. Exactly. With, he's so going there cool. with his friends. Yeah. They yeah. seem to be hanging out. So as long as he enjoys it, then I'm all good. And we still have time to do other stuff. Like, I, I took him through. A workout. Yeah. God, I, I swear to God, I remember. Do you guys remember? Well, see, you guys didn't start lifting weights until a little bit later. But I remember working out, and I know training kids at that age too, 14, 15. Basically, you just get stronger every workout. Like yeah. every single time you you train, I'm like, oh, there's two more reps. Oh, mm -hmm. here's five pounds. Oh, mm -hmm. here's – it's crazy. Yeah. they're Because your body's already primed to do that anyway. It's already growing <laughs> on it, its own. It's so funny. And he's starting to get a little jazzed about it. Now, so is, he, is he is he – now, because uh, he was – he played some sports last year, right? He, played he likes basketball. volleyball. Okay. Now, yeah. is, is he, I imagine he can't do that with He's going to try to do volleyball Oh, too. my God. With the robotics? Yeah, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't imagine. So we'll possible. see and if he has to pick one. It and, sounds yeah. like the commitment for – is it, it robotics year-round or is it a season like, uh, like I think it's a season. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I think it is so a season. So maybe if it's not – not conflicting. He yeah, did. yeah, okay. yeah. But then there's clubs and there's all these other things and it's, you know, he signed up for a club called the Meat Club. It's, it's meat, meat. M E A T club. The Meat so Club. So once a, I think it's like once a week they all get together and they grill up uh -huh. meat 
<laughs> together. Bring some like, kill bosses in. I hey. guess you could start whatever yeah. fucking club you want when you're school. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have clubs like that when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. What do like, you got over there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got to hook them up with Butcher Box, dude. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I know, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, anyway. Sponsored or something. I thought that was funny. So Yeah. Uh, did you guys see the uh, the Instagram news that came out? You sent it over and I didn't get a chance to read well, what it Tell me, tell me. I'm going to pull it up right now so that I know I don't get it wrong. Yeah, you had sent it over, and I I kind of... So this is big news. Uh, this is a big announcement. They're going to be banning, like, uh, what, detox teas and those types of things well, here's, from people's dude, feeds? This is huge. This is huge news. Instagram, here's the title of the article. Instagram is going to restrict who can see posts about cosmetic procedures and weight loss products. So basically what they're going to do, and they're going to make it like you can't see this. It's going to say something like uh, this is restricted. If you're under the age of 18, they're going to remove posts that make claims about diets or weight loss products and that if it's if it's linked to something that someone can buy with like a discount code or whatever. So there, you can no longer, so, you know, what's her name? Kylie Jenner is not going to be able to pr promote her fit tea to anybody under the age of 18. It'll automatically it. block them out. I love this. So do I. Mm -hmm. I think this is great. And I think it's great because it's market based. Well, yes. It's not a law. It's Instagram. You know? Yesterday right. I did my self regulated. Uh, I did my talk to the um the forum for uh, my, my live QA on the forum and one of the questions were was asked how I, I think the future of um you know social media what it looks like for companies and businesses. And I think that when it first came out, um you know, I think companies that are were already in existence or were already multi million dollar companies kind of just like were whatever about social media. You didn't need it. You were already a, a, a huge company. Then social media grew so big that they recognized like, okay, we need to have it. So then they adopted it by hiring out and then they probably have somebody who just kind of runs it. And it really turned more into just another marketing tool for them or whatever. But I really think that, um, and I like to think that Mind Pump is a little ahead of the curve uh, than some of these other companies that we we really looked at our social media as as a way to connect with people mm -hmm. and not a way to like sell our products. Um, and so I think that th we're going to see that happen. Like I think we're going to what's happened is people figured out oh if I hack the system I get a ton a ton of people looking at me I've got a million eyes on me now all I have to do is hustle and sell a few things and I can make some money. I think we're going to see it go back to what it originally was designed for, which is the social aspect mm -hmm. of it, which is probably going to fuck a lot of people. You got to think how many people how many people rely on Instagram, swipe up and buy my shit. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, I think yeah. about it. if you're selling yeah. these products, and I don't know how much how big of the market of these weight loss diet products Pro go to kids under eighteen. Yeah, but it's got to be something. It's not nothing, right? So automatically, right off the top, whoosh, mm -hmm. you're going to lose a chunk. Of revenue because you can't now. You can't I bet sell it's them. a bigger you know number than you'd think. Uh, I, you know people on Instagram that are you know younger and like age category that can, Bro, are susceptible to 15, that. 15, 16, 17 years old. You think about like you being that age. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean that's the age when you start th have the, start getting the body image issues and shit. It's the only know? time I even paid attention to that stuff. And who's gonna and who's more easily manipulated than than that age yeah. group to buy some buy into some bullshit sure. like fit tea? Or I some think shit. this is really cool on Instagram's part. I really do, and I think that. It's responsible of, of them, but I also think that they're foreseeing that they can be demonized for this later. You know what I'm saying? So oh, they're yeah. trying to be they're trying to be proactive. Like, okay, this looks bad on our part that these which is good. That's are, quality control. Yep. You know, every company needs to take that amount of time to assess. You know what they're actually promoting and what they're allowing and what the experience is for the user. Yeah, because this didn't happen when we were kids. Every single fucking shitty candy bullshit you know whatever commercial was geared towards children yeah it still is and so tv never did that so it's cool that social media is kind of taking that step you know what i mean well you're so, probably right yeah, I there's think it, bits of hope in there yeah yeah they're, they're yeah, probably sure. they're probably afraid a little bit i think yeah, that's what it is yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean there, we've probably there's probably stories we don't even know about that have came out of like some you know 16 year old kid that's you know, overdoing it on, you know, fat fat loss pill, skinny tea, doing all that shit like that, yep. and then hospitalized over it. Yep, and shit. Yeah. I'm sure that's where sure stuff that's like happened. that's happening yeah, in the yeah. past yeah. for sure. What's that book there? <laughs> I didn't know if you're gonna like I brought this in because I thought it was hilarious. Like this is like my one Uncle Rico like almanac, you know, what? that I could bring in. Grab, yeah. Grab I'm itself. like that I'm like that guy that's like well, I was at my parents' house the other day 
And uh, here, you can, you can read. Just what? read the title of it. I start laughing what, what right is away. It? America's Champion Athletes Award Yearbook. Boom. Wow. Wait a minute. That's how, a title. Is how that did a, you end up in is this? Is that really a thing? That's really a thing. Did your this mom is, make that? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's okay. United States. It's like States, a ribbon for, <laughs> you know, on. like a spelling bee or something. United States Achievement Academy National Awards, 1996 to 1997. Yeah. America's Champion Athletes, America's Homecoming Queens, and the Royal Court United States National Cheerleader Awards. Yeah, so I'm in the cheerleader part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. Is there, okay. I have a tag, dude, like the, on the side there. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, you, you shit. You can find me. Justin Andrews, yeah. San Lorenzo Valley High School. Look at that. And that's yeah. an achievement. What did you achieve, though? So look at it. Look at the next like tag, dude. It'll, it'll like highlight it. You look like a bully. I know. <laughs> they took like the most angry pick. <laughs> you look such, like, such a, like, like such a mean kid. Yeah. What does it say? Tell me what. Oh, I got to look up your name here. Yeah. Andrew. It's right at the top. Oh, let's see. Justin Andrews. Yeah. Uh, all country award, all state award. Baseball, basketball, football. Wow, weightlifting. And weightlifting. Damn, yes, bro. Son. In the smashed. In what, a, in what, a what, book. What, what is it? Yeah, what's the award? Let me see. Let's no, see. I was like. I think his mom made this. Too. Yeah, like, like all American mention and all that kind of stuff. But it was just funny because I forgot about all that stuff. And like my kids have always given me a hard time because they've only seen me play once, right? At that like reunion game and all this. And like. Yeah, you know they're they're always asking me like I don't know, Dad, did you really play? And like they're like challenging me on, on the fact that I like actually started on the field and played and all this stuff, and I'm coaching. That's them. great, so man. I found that and I was like, here, boom, poof, you know, yeah, slap I, you with that. That's very very cool, no, it was, brother. It was cool, but yeah, it's how, totally like how skinny you are. And then I was too <laughs> tiny for college, so I got no more. <laughs> That was like my one period in life where I was like, I could throw it over this mountain, dude. So, what were the weightlifting uh, accomplishments and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, like how do you, how do you, how, how do you, you get in? Yeah, yeah, I remember I that one. That was for squat, uh, power, clean, and bench, and the the combo of the three. Do you remember what that was? Those no, numbers. I don't so let me. Uh, is this is this uh, uh, is this how like um you know like in every high school you have. Like we had it too, right? Like um, all all the sports record breakers, yeah, all the records, yeah, it's all the records. So that the school like like sent. Okay, so that's how is that how you get into this book? So, I think so. Yeah. So well, you have you have records at the high school, then they submit it to here. To, <laughs> what, Adam fight is a name in there. I know. I'm like, yeah, I did. I was looking for you. <laughs> I didn't see you. I didn't see, see any Stefanos in there. Uh, what's up? You know? Oh, hey, uh, we're gonna have to look at this. Honestly, hey, you know how I, I know was, I was the, the chess team. You know, maybe we'll look at that. Hey, you know how I know that uh, that Adam and I are not. This is how humble Justin yeah. is. First off, this is the first time we've ever heard of this. If it was me or Adam, <laughs> it would have been talked about right away. It would have been, 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 been at the studio. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I thought it was funny. I was just like, ah, whatever. And then here's how, here's the other thing that shows you how humble Justin is. Doesn't even remember the numbers he lift, lifted. No, I, don't I could tell you the numbers I lifted when I was 15, <laughs> 16 years old, no problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just thought it was cool that it like gave me cred. I, that's all I care about. You know, like, oh, cool. I did do something good, back then. Good job, dude. That's kind of yeah. cool, man. You need to be you need to be more boastful. I'm trying to work on my braggadocious. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Hang out with us long have it. I'm yeah. trying to find if they have any kids from Oakdale here. Yeah. Let me see here. No, you guys suck. Yeah, they might. I'm no, I well, my, I my <laughs> I have no idea. I, I know He's my gonna fight you, dude. I didn't I didn't have any high school records, but my best friend had uh, the record for steals in basketball. So I'm just like curious if that's how I, I I'm curious to how you get in this. Yeah, and that was during those years too. So that was my junior. Bro, it's year. it's like it looks like a like an official like American thing. Yeah, it's American. <laughs> like it American. is American. You know it's what American I'm saying? American athlete, champion athletes. Dude. Damn. Yeah, I'm going to put that on my Instagram handle, I think. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> hey, I got a, I got a cool uh, article that I read, not to change subjects, but they just developed a prosthetic artificial hand that, uh, number one, it, it reads the electric signals that come from the brain and move to the amputee's arm yeah. to control the hand, which we've had that before, right? So let's say you're an amputee, you put this prosthetic hand on, it'll, it starts to learn to read the muscle signals so you can control the hand like you would with like normally or whatever. But it also has an algorithm that learns how to work with you because one of the challenges is, let's say I grab a cup, once it starts to slip, you have milliseconds to adjust your grip mm -hmm. or change your grip. Mm -hmm. Well, this algorithm learns how to do that. So they're saying that this is the most realistic wow. 
artificial hand that's ever been made. So you start predicting patterns. Yeah, so we're getting close to the point where you'll get a prosthetic hand and you'll be able to yeah. articulate and do what things. What happens when it gets like too close to your crotch? You're like, oh, no, not right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bad timing. The algorithms. Yeah. The algorithms are controlling me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, scientists are like, well, the algorithm just reads what you do a lot of. Yeah. It tries to predict. <laughs> reads what's on your mind. Yeah. Yeah. You're going yeah. to Starbucks. Yeah. You're giving yourself a hand job. <laughs> no. Yeah. But anyway, that's pretty cool, right? So I think, you know, I think we're probably a couple decades away from having like the Star Wars, uh, what's his name? Luke, Luke Skywalker's Skywalker? hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, we're almost Maybe. there. No. First question is from Nick Rosenbaum. I've seen many people claim that training arms every day will force them to grow. Some people even show good results. However, wouldn't that be overtraining and send a signal to repair damage rather than build muscle? Mm. I thought I talked about this. Back in the day, I would have been like, dumb, don't train body parts every single day. You got to give it rest. Let's leave it alone. Let it grow. Whatever. Um, and then uh, I observed how many of the blue collar workers in my family had body parts that were very, very well developed that corresponded to whatever their job was. So I noticed that the plumbers in my family had these comically muscular forearms, uh, whereas the rest of the body kind of looked whatever. And they had these muscular forearms. None of them lifted weights. I saw I had mail carriers. Here's another one mail carriers in my family who were in their 50s and 60s who you know didn't work out all of them had fantastic calves because they walked obviously miles every single day and i and i put that together and thought you know i'm sure when you're you're a plumber for the first 6 months or so you're getting sore in your hands mm -hmm. and you are breaking muscle down but after that you get used to it like i ask him like do your hands and, and forearms get sore he goes, i mean I, I get the occasional pain he goes but not the muscle i don't really he's been doing it for 20 or 30 years so I figured there's got to be something else that's going on. Then when you look back on old time workout routines, you see some of these strong men and, and, and athletes apply some of these principles. Um, there's a squat every day plan where you could you squat every single day and people would, would experience amazing muscle growth in their legs and strength. Um, I experienced crazy gains in my lifts from increasing the frequency. I had a trainer who, in between clients, would go and do a couple sets of bench press. And this guy had like a 350 pound bench press and he was like 180 pounds, something like that. And I applied that same thing and I my bench press went up 20 pounds in a very short period of time. So I started to realize that there was something to this. The key is the intensity. Yeah. Yes, I'm undulating the waiting intensity. to tell you that because yeah. I feel like that's the thing you have to be very careful. Because I remember as a kid, I did this I train arms every day. Problem is, I train arms every day to failure. Yeah. I mean, I went in there and blasted them as much as I possibly could in hopes that they would grow. And, you know, initially there were, it, they grew and then they kind of plateaued really hard. And then I was just in this place where I never felt like I could get them to grow anymore. So I, you, you have to understand that if you're training every single day, the intensity has to scale way back way back i mean it, it's got to scale way back just like we talk a lot about frequency and talk and most all of our programs you're you're hitting the muscle group no less than two a minimum of uh, two to three times a week in, in every one of our programs so even when you do three times a week and what you'll notice about the programs most all all everything you're doing is just a couple sets you know a few sets at most uh, per, per per body part because we know you're going to come back in a day or two and hit that again so we we really scale back on the amount of volume and in the intensity that you hit that muscle at so and when you use the analogy of your family and the mail carriers and the mechanics that are working on things like yeah they're not adding extra resistance to make it harder they're not maxing out every yeah day. no they're, they're using it more efficient right they're using a wrench or their body weight they're walking around mm -hmm. so they can handle uh that intensity day in day in and day out so you have to understand that if you approach training a muscle that frequently, that the and the more frequent you do it, the more you have to scale back the the mm. intensity. Well, technically, with Maps Aesthetic, you could be training a body part <clears throat> technically six days a week. Now, three of those days are the hard workouts. The other three days or two days are what are called focus sessions, and you're using exercises that are not nearly as intense. Your intensity is down. You're focusing on form. You're focusing on squeezing the muscle. You're focusing on the pump. MAPS Anabolic, if you do the trigger sessions properly, technically, you can hit a body part every single day and on some days, several times a day. But the intensity is greatly reduced 
on many of those days. And what you're doing is you're just sending a very light muscle building signal. Now, it's still a muscle building signal. It's just sent lightly. But that doesn't replace the heavy, loud muscle building signals. You still need to do that. Um, so if you're going to do something, and I experienced this as a kid. I remember you know, back when I started working out, one body part that I was really concerned about when I first started ex training was my shoulders. I'm not a wide person. I don't have wide bone structure. And on top of it, I was really skinny. So I was a narrow, skinny dude, and shirts just kind of hung on the sides. And I was very self-conscious about my shoulders. And so I did, I did my typical, you know, one one day a week of hard, long shoulder workout. But I couldn't help myself but do a few sets at the end of every workout for my shoulders because I just liked getting a pump. I liked the way it looked. And the irony of that was my shoulders responded exceptionally well. I never pieced that together until much later. So frequency is a wonderful, beautiful tool you can use to really sculpt and shape your body. Yeah. You want to have at least, in my experience, two to three hard workouts a week for a body part. That's about the most yeah, most people can even handle. Even then, you got to you got to. You're not going to crazy failure, and you're not doing 12, 15 sets. No, so no. you got to explain that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're doing when you say that, Sal, three times a week hard. You're talking about three to five sets. Yeah, maybe maybe at the most, all, you know, six sets. You know, for a body part right. each time, which is right. six times three would be what eighteen sets. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're going hard three days a week, it's on five sets or to right. eight sets tops. You right, know, right, it's right. not. What most magazines that that was the pro, that was the, the the connection I didn't make as a kid, you know I I was I would follow a, a workout and it's fifteen to twenty sets for a, a muscle group like say your biceps, and then I, because I wanted them to grow so I, I just I did that again and again and again and again mm -hmm. every single day and that's just way too much volume you're just doing so much damage you're you're never allowing the body to fully yep. recover so. Yeah, you could train it three days hard, but hard doesn't mean more. You got to be careful. No, with your your total volume per week for the hard sets is anywhere between nine to maybe eighteen sets total. So that would be if it's three days a week, that would be three sets each workout for that body part, or six sets each workout uh, for that body part at the most. Not eighteen sets on each workout right that would be way too which much. when you say things like hard i think that's what people think sure. I mean, that's what i thought as a kid like a hard workout to me i gotta do you know at least 10 12 sets. It. yeah i'm annihilating it yeah now olympic lifters so olympic lifters train very frequently you look at some of the top olympic lifters with very low intensity yeah they're 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 it's all about explosiveness and technique and they're not trained to failure intensity is definitely connected to hypertrophy which is muscle growth uh, but frequency is also connected to muscle growth, and frequency is good for strength, for learning technique. So what you want to do is kind of combine the two. Have your harder workouts, but modulate the intensity a little bit, um, and then have the kind of lighter workouts to bump up the, the frequency, and then watch what happens to your body. I guarantee, look, I tell you what, if you're, doing, if you're hitting a body part once a week for 15 sets, hit that body part three days a week and do five sets each workout. Okay, so you just, You're working out more often, same total volume. Watch what happens. Next question is from Jay Cisneros. What single exercise would each of you pick that would have the biggest corrective benefit for the general population? Ooh, that's I have, a tough one. I have two that come right to mind right away. I I 100% think that the seated row has to be one of the most beneficial exercises that everybody should have in their routine uh, because of upper cross syndrome. And this is where I think the hip thrust has a ton of value. I think uh, the uh, a hip thrust or a floor bridge um, for uh, the lower half. So I think address upper cross syndrome, lower cross syndrome have to be uh, the two most prevalent um, you know, issues that we have with people's posture. Uh, those two exercises uh, hmm. help address that. So I think that if I were to only pick one, it would have to be one of those two. If I, yeah. I, if I have to just pick one exercise to sort of highlight and address like almost Everything. every issue would be the Turkish get up. Uh, and, and that was not mainly because I could use that as a coach to assess, you know, where the deficiencies lied, you know, like what function were they not capable of what, what they couldn't, what they couldn't like resist in terms of like rotating certain body parts or what they couldn't sustain in terms of like, did they have like the, the, the actual uh, stamina to be able to hold the weight the entire time and be able to stay focused and fixed? And is, is focus the issue? Is direction the issue? Is like body communication, body awareness, like 
uh, you know, lots of different things and strength, you know, ab- abdominal strength, just the crunch, you know, in that first move or, or press or just get off the ground. And it, it just it shows me a lot about how their entire body and kinetic chain uh, is linked together. Yeah, I, I like that exercise. I guess this is assuming that the single exercise is done properly. Because then I think about a Turkish get I'm like, wow, the general population. They're not going to get it. They're not well, going yeah, to do well, it. It's almost like a humbling move. We would well, have to assume re- that they re- could re- do it. Read what it's saying, though. Uh, the biggest corrective uh, exercise, right? So, because I, I would say a, a squat would be up there with one of the best over single overall exercises that addresses everything. But if you have, if you have a ser- if you have serious posture issues and you yeah. have incredibly poor mechanics, me just doing a bad squat forever is a terrible idea. And say, I feel the same way about the Turkish get-up. It's like if I have ex- excessive forward shoulder, um, terrible you know, trunk rotation, I have terrible ankle mobility, my Turkish get-up is going to be a fucking disaster. And doing just the Turkish get-up to me is, is, is not going to be able to address that as well as something that's going to directly combat what I think are some of the most pro- the, uh, prevalent problems, which would be the rounded forward shoulders or like an anterior pelvic tilt. Those two mm-hmm. things, in my opinion, are the worst. Though the two exercises that I listed, I think directly combat those issues. So that's where That's I'm, a tough one, right? Because yeah. you have to assume either you either assume that they can do the exercise properly or you assume average person, which most people can't do most exercises properly, right? Right. Because then you're right. I would pick overhead presses and squatting and right. you know but the average person you just tell them to do that they're going to they're going to hurt themselves or, or cause their problems to get worse uh prone cobra has got to be one oh, for me that's, that's a great one because i think the average person can get it can kind of do it um and then the prone cobra does work on that scapular retraction it does work on external rotation with the shoulders mm. it does offset some of those issues but it doesn't address the lower body at all there's no lumbar pelvic yeah, hip area if i were to simplify it and i know that you know turkish get is probably the most complex you know s- set of movements you could string together uh i'd probably do like a body weight windmill just because that way too i could get that because of the fact that people just aren't rotating enough and they don't and and to be able to see how they can articulate you know their back and and shoulders and hinge their hips properly and you know work their way down uh, so it does include the lower body on on that level as well but also shows yeah. you know like uh, what I'm working with in terms of their posture now, not not to take this in a different direction but I think the single best activity that has both the mo- the, the biggest realistic uh, effect in other words, that most people would actually do it um, and have a huge payback in terms of health would be just walking. Um, or walking, swimming. Well, walking requires swimming requires a pool and a body of water. Mm-hmm. Walking doesn't require all that, so it's and it's realistic because most people can walk. So it's like if we if people would just walk more. That's not the answer. It's not the answer to everything, but it's the it's kind of a realistic approach, right? It's like okay, you can go outside and walk, can't you? Yes. Okay. Why don't you do that? And then see what happened. Everything else requires a level of instruction. Yeah, and- I think, but yeah, you're definitely taking it a different direction because it's like, what single exercise yeah. would each of yeah. you pick that would have the biggest corrective benefit for the general population? And uh, I mean, I'm listening to what you guys are saying right now, and I'm walking isn't a corrective. No, benefit. it's not. It's not. You know, it's what you should do for overall health. 100. percent Turkish get up, same thing in the windmill. But I'm like. You, when I think corrective, I think of what have we seen over our, our fix the problem. Yeah, what are the most common problems? I like your prone cobra. Yeah, prone cobra would be. I that can get for down me. with prone cobra because that directly combats upper cross syndrome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and the reason why I couldn't isolate it to just one is because lower cross syndrome is almost as prevalent as upper cross yep. syndrome. They're both. I mean, it's it's pretty much everybody has both of those or one of those excessively. So. You know, I wouldn't want to just only do one exercise. I would have to do something to address the the uh, upper cross syndrome, and then something to address the, the lower cross syndrome. And to me, a uh, floor bridge or a hip thrust directly combats uh, the lower issues, and then something like a row or a prone cobra, I think, directly combats the the upper. Right. Mm-hmm. Next question is from Logron. How do you overcome the the I'll just start tomorrow mentality when you have a bad moment or day? Uh, every moment is an opportunity to start. Every single moment. Um, so literally the second after you make a quote-unquote bad decision or one that wasn't in line with your goals, the next available moment is a time that you can start 
fresh. And this is an interesting uh, way of looking at things. It's one that I think is more beneficial. Um, I, it's funny. We have our our days and weeks and months are, are broken up into these arbitrary, you know, time frames. You know, a day. Well, it's not arbitrary necessarily, but 24 hours because the sun rises and sets. And then we break that up into, you know, weeks, which is seven days and then months. And so you end up getting this like January's around the corner. I'm going to wait till January so I could start the new year. Or, okay, I'll wait till Monday because Monday starts the week. But the reality is every moment is is new. Every single moment is starting over. So when something happens, rather than kind of harping on it, you're in a new space. Like, okay, that happened. Now I'm going to get back um, and do, you know, and, and follow what I think is, is going to help me out. I also think it too, it goes back to a question I think we just recently answered too about goal setting and, and sometimes – setting too much too soon or or trying like for example like i love having a gym membership because sometimes i feel like this sometimes i'm um, not being very consistent and i told myself in the morning that you know today i'm going to make sure i get this workout in and and maybe yesterday when i was talking about it that i'm going to do this when the morning time came around i'm tired i'm fatigued i got busy and i'm like uh now i'm like oh, i'll just do it tomorrow right Instead of I'll just do it tomorrow, if I told myself I'll do it today, maybe instead of like committing to this hardcore workout that I'm going to go do the first time, I'm just going to get to the gym and be okay with maybe I'll go to the gym and only walk on the treadmill or maybe I'll go to the gym and only do one exercise, like just okay with that. And so I think that will help because sometimes when you are thinking about going to do a workout, we, we connect workouts with this. It's got to be like an ass kicker. I got to be sweating. I have to feel that way. And as it's if like, it doesn't count. Right, exactly. As right. if going to the gym and actually walking on the treadmill for 20 minutes and doing 10 bicep curls doesn't count as something. That counts. That counts. It's better than nothing. It's better mm -hmm. than you saying, I'll go tomorrow. So what I've learned to do now is just, hey, if I commit that I'm going to go today or whatever, I'm going today. I'm just, I can, my lazy ass could drive to the gym. Now, sometimes I'm, I, I've, and I have done this before where I had the intention of starting a really good workout and I had it planned and it's going to be this thing. And, and I just was not going to feeling it at all, but I was also not going to not go to the gym because I've committed to that. And then I went there and I just walked on the treadmill for an entire hour and listened to music or read something on my phone while I'm walking there. It's like just doing that already is a step in the right direction. And sometimes we think we have to take this giant step to get started. And when we think of a giant step and you got uh, such a busy life and all this other shit going on, it's really easy to get stuck in that mentality of, you know, I'll just smart, I'll start yeah. tomorrow. What would you say before movement creates momentum? Uh, momentum right? Right. It's, it's, it has to be something super simple. Like even if you have that thought that, oh, tomorrow, like do something right then, like do some air squats, do some push. I don't even care what the fuck it is. Right. Get That's the movement. Gonna, yes. Yeah, so you have to do something. Be actionable, uh, you know. Even if it's writing, writing it down on a piece of paper, like you did something. Well, the amazing part is when you do that. A lot of times, and this has also happened. There's sometimes when I go and it only ends up being a one hour walk on the treadmill, and I didn't hit the. But then there's other times where it starts off and I only do a, a few sets of bicep curls, but then the blood gets flowing. You know, I get a little bit of energy back. The right song hits my headphones right then. Then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do another exercise. And then another exercise turns into another exercise. And then before you know it, I got a great one-hour workout. So, you know, be okay with, hey, I might go there and only do one thing or walk or do something, create movement like Justin's saying. Mm -hmm. But because sometimes it does end up leading into a, a great workout. So what something that I like to visualize that helps me um, anytime I'm, I'm doing something difficult, because um, there are tasks that, you know, we, we big goals that you could set for yourself that just seem – insurmountable, you know, like, you know, I want to save X amount of dollars or I want to lose, you know, 30 pounds or I want to increase, you know, 50 pounds on this particular lift or, or whatever. They can seem uh, initially just like impossible. Gosh, how do you lose 30 pounds? Like, well, okay, fine. If I lost a pound a week, it take 30 weeks and that's at a good pace. That could take a long time. That means if I don't mess up, I can totally understand what that feels like. So, Try visualizing this. If you took, and I've used this before, if you took two parallel lines, two lines that were perfectly parallel to each other, and you moved one, just a fraction, one-fourth of a degree to the right, that's it. You wouldn't even be able to tell that they weren't parallel. But if you followed those two lines for a mile, 
five miles, 10 miles, 100 miles, the distance between those two lines would become vast. And the further you follow those two lines, the further apart they are, literally. And they continue to drift apart the more time you follow them uh, down their path. That's you. So you're following some path. Just adjust it a slight degree to the direction you want to move. That's it. And then stay on that slight degree change. And then watch what happens as time passes. As time passes, more and more changes happen, and you get further and further along, and you get closer and closer to your goal. So start with something that's challenging but realistic. That's a small change. Stay there, and then wait. And trust me, you'll know when it's time to add the next small but realistic and challenging uh, you know, change. And then that leads to the big changes every single time. Next question is from Jay Slaba. Can you give behind the scenes on making a podcast such as staff, prep, interviewer, and question selection, roles and assignments, et cetera? This has changed a lot since uh, early days of making the podcast. Oh, of course. Yeah, early I mean, days we used to meet slang it. after work. We'd all meet up at like, I don't know, what time would we meet up? Like 6 o'clock, six, 5 yeah, o'clock? Yeah, I think it was 6. Uh, and first we started in Doug's living room. Um, and then we had a little studio and the four of us would meet there, uh, once or twice a week and record three episodes all at once. And it was, the prep was literally, we got into the room. Yeah. Uh, hey, you guys want to talk about a little whiskey yeah. and then, yeah. You want to talk about this? Okay, let's go. And Doug would turn on the microphones and we would literally just go. And back then it was really easy because they were only, you know, we, I think we did something and we looked up like the average commute. Yeah, in the United States, and it was like twenty eight minutes or something like that. And so the goal was um, thirty minute episode. Yeah, remember when Sal used to go? Hey, I used to have to check the time. Hey, hey Doug, how much time I'm we sorry got? I left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, in the middle of the episode. You know, it's weird. It's it's weird how yeah. how we don't need we feel the time. Yeah, yeah how yeah. accurately we feel how how long we've been going. So, so that that's changed. Then it turned into we'd come into the studio um, and we would say, okay, what topic are we going to talk about? Um, and we would maybe thought about it before. Then it turned into we would all come with some, you know, I would I would bring stuff. I, I like to read studies and articles, and so I would just save them, and Adam would save stuff, and Justin would have stuff. Then we'd come in, and we would just bring them up. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I read this article. I did this thing. And now there's a little bit more prep. Now we, we sit down. We write down. Uh, we have a, a TV screen up uh, in the studio, and we write down loosely, you know, articles we want to bring up, things that happen to us the day before or whatever that we want to bring up, um, you know, whatever, you know, product we may have used that we might want to, you know, comment yeah, on. And if it fits in the conversation, then it makes it. If not, we sometimes don't, you know, pull yep. from it. But yeah, it's 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 still somewhat loose, which I, I'm glad because yes. like if it's too structured, I just don't think that we could oh, it's have as good a conversation. It's not structured at all. The, no. the, 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 and honestly, that's what's kind of cool how we've been able to keep it really organic still is that and, and there's there was never really a conversation around this. It just kind of naturally happened. It morphed. We, we started to piece together that um, the audience really enjoyed, you know, this a little bit of, of personal stories, a little bit of uh, science, um, a little bit of business talk, and maybe debate on, on conversation around health and fitness and social shit that's going on. Uh, and then, of course, we have the business side where we have to address our, our partnerships. And so we kind of like, we know all that, like we come in and we know that those, those are things that people want. And each of us, no one says anything. The night before and or the morning of, I don't know when everybody does their kind of homework or research. Um, my routine before I, I had a kid was the morning before. I'm having to do it late at night now, but it before was first thing in the morning. I'd get up extra early and have my cup of coffee and I'd read, a, read some articles and go through some stuff. And I would take some notes of like, hey, these are some things that I want to bring up. I wouldn't tell that the guys don't know anything about it. And then they, they would do the same thing too. So everybody mm -hmm. kind of does this on their own and it's unsaid. And then when we get in the studio, uh, Rachel, she's in charge of partnerships and she manages that. So she comes in, she meets us with us in the morning and she'll tell us like, for example, today was, you know, Mir and Organifi's products. And so she'll either share with us new things that are going on with their partnerships or what we've recently done with them. So we can share and talk about that. And then we integrate that into conversation somehow. Again, it's not structured. Nobody knows how it's going to happen. It just kind of naturally 
happens during the show. Sometimes one guy will be like, oh, don't worry, I got it. I just, like Sal today, who said yesterday I was just using uh, a different uh, plant protein reminded me of how good Organifi is. Right. I'll take care of that commercial. It's interesting how it's like influenced uh, life outside of this too, which I I pay a lot more attention to moments where I'm like, oh, wow. Like if I was using one of the products or if I was like just out and about and it was a funny thing that happened, I'm like writing that down now, like yeah. after kind of like documenting, you know, what's going on in my life a lot more because it just makes for better conversation on here. And so it's like, that's yeah. one of those things. Right. One, one thing that I really appreciate is that uh, we allow the, the, the podcast to naturally take shape in terms of, you know, who tends to talk about what and what the conversation, where the conversation is going to lead. And we, there was no, I mean, it's funny early on when we very, very, very first started the podcast before we launched the podcast, there was a fourth member and he had an issue with, uh, with how, how much airtime each one of us would have. He wanted to make sure that we all spoke a certain amount and Okay, Sal, you're talking too much. And, yeah, this up, huh? yeah. yeah, and all of us were like, "No, We're like, oh, gross." That's not <laughs> how we have a conversation. No, it needs to be. It needs to be very, very authentic, and we just do our thing. And then if it morphs and molds and, and turns into whatever it's going to turn into, so now it's turned into a show with a, an intro and questions. That was never really planned. Yeah. Uh, it was just that's just kind of naturally how the episode started. Doug would turn the mics on, we would have fun conversation, and then we'd be like, "Hey, let's talk about squats," and then we. would end up talking about squats. Now, it's also, I mean, you know, we're addressing a lot of the show, but there's also a lot of things that have happened with, with staff, right? So we've really evolved. Oh, so much. Yeah, yeah I mean, right now- you've, That people have no idea. Yeah, you have yeah. Andrew behind the cameras right now who's who's bouncing between uh, each of us as we talk and, and taking notes too on specific topics that we hit, things that strike a chord with him. He'll take notes and then him and Rachel will meet and that's how she comes up with specific clips for the Instagram, they'll take a 30 second to a minute sound bites from some of these episodes and that gets posted on Instagram. Doug's over uh, behind the computer and manning everything. So when Sal starts talking loud and squeaky, he's always constantly <laughs> right, yeah. adjusting him and turning his voice down. Or if Justin's not talking loud enough, he's turning yeah. it up. And so, so maybe I should beep out what Justin just said. Yeah. yeah so he's, so Doug's constantly on that, making sure uh, everything sounds uh, on point for the, the listener. Um, and then, then all this gets sent back over to Rachel after uh, Doug edits and goes through that. She then takes clips of whatever we've done for commercials uh, for our partners, and then she meets with our partners once a week and uh, makes sure that uh, the way we're talking about their brands is up to up to par with what they're looking for and that we're communicating right. If and they and then when we meet with her again every single Monday, she's downloading us on anything that's happening new with them. And so we have direction to take uh, future commercials and talk about. So uh, that's happening. What else do we got going on that's different now that is uh, that we Well, I mean, have? we have people making YouTube videos and yeah. putting those out and we have people writing content for us and it's a it's a it's a large it's a it's a pretty big operation it's a now. Big organism now. Yeah, and what you see is the surface. There's a lot of stuff. It's like an iceberg, right? You see the yeah. tip of the iceberg, and underneath the water, there's a there's a huge uh, piece of ice. There's a lot of moving parts to it. Um, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, what, what I, I really appreciate is that our content still comes from just kind of how we talk about things. Oh yeah, even when we have yep. uh, notes of things that each of us may want to talk about, rarely ever does it that go accordingly. I mean, it almost never does. In fact, what ends up normally happening uh, happening is just because naturally we've all brought something to talk about, one of us ends up striking a chord. Like somebody hits a topic that like, oh, we're all now interested in, and then we kind of go down the rabbit hole. And then a lot of times you know, one the other two guys who had notes about things that they might have bring up, they don't even bring it up. They just whatever move on from it because yep. that ended up being a great topic. Well, I tell you what, it's a it's a it's an interesting skill, and I because I think it's almost like driving with navigation all the time. And then you turn off your navigation. Oh my God, I'm lost. We we're you know we we just start we have our conversations, and we don't necessarily need to re rely on what notes we have or what's on the screen. And I like that. I feel like it's a superpower. I really do. I feel like we could, and it, and it helps the, well, us produce as much content as to, we do. To that point, going over to like the like interviews, right? So we just, we just had an incredible interview that we just did right now this morning uh, that I'm really excited to release uh, because I was super interested in the topic. Something that we do for prepping for an interview, each guy kind of does his own homework, you know, researching TED Talks, blog articles, their website, diving through their social, uh, and everybody does that on their own time. 
And then when we come to an interview, I I don't I tried this before, so I I would have questions, and I I might write these down in my notes of like things I want to go to, but rarely ever do I like ask the question the way I have it written in my notes. It never happens that way. Well, yeah, and to that point, I think you you have heard podcasts that will do that, and they'll they'll keep them you know very much in that 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 cadence of like okay this question and this question and it's like follows like the interviewer is like driving the conversation versus it's like a dialogue and i think we all just really love the dialogue and to have like a round robin discussion about these topics yeah so we so you everyone may do their homework because it's important that we all know our guest and have things they want to talk about so that we don't have like dead air uh but once the conversation gets flowing what's neat is you know we're we're real, we're authentic, and we're genuinely interested in the guest that's there. And so we kind of just let the conversation flow in any direction. And because we've done our homework and we know enough about them, if one of us probably feels that the conversation is getting boring, we probably redirect and go to a, a topic that mm -hmm. we've been wanting to get to with them. Good times. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all 100% free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.